Saturday? Uh, we're, st we're still talking about that, uh, potentially. Um, DJ has definitely earned it, though. There's no question about it. So uh, we're, still, we're still in discussion about that and, and how we can uh, utilize Cade. Um, but, uh, but like I said, right now, DJ's no doubt the starter. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they did a good job on defense for sure. I mean, they did they did a they did a good job of covering guys, and and uh, we didn't do as good of a job, you know, getting open. And there was some there were some opportunities, some play calls that were uh, directed to the tight ends that didn't get it to them uh, based on whether it was a sack or a tip ball uh, a couple times. So uh, didn't get them to enough opportunity. That's what I could do a better job of, um, like we did the week before. Um, but there were, you know, some plays that were definitely going to them that, based on what the structure was or what happened, it didn't get, it didn't get to them. You know, even though the, the game plan and the and the the, the uh, scheme was to get the ball to them, it just didn't work out on some of those plays. Man, really, really good. I mean, really good uh, in a lot of ways. They've. Uh, you know, have done a good job of, of, you know, being versatile, really, and not just being, you know, guys in the box, but guys that can play out of the box. So, um, like I've said all year long, they have, they've been a very valuable piece of, uh, you know, distributing the ball in a lot of different ways. We look at a couple guys that could be pros. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's no question. I mean, Davis Allen is a guy that has proven that. Um, whoever gets him, uh, whatever round it is, is uh, he's going to be a guy that's going to play a long time. Removed sort of from the emotion in the end game, just being in the middle of the game when you were sitting there yesterday, you looked at the second half and say, gosh, should we just kind of lather it up? We probably should have given it to him more, or is that a product more of reads? Yeah, of both? no, good, good, good point. I think, uh, you know, he got the ball 17 times. Um, and we have basically four guys that are running backs, including my quarterback. You know, so uh, he, he got the ball a decent amount at the end of the game, the, la the end of the third and the fourth quarter. Uh, there were about five or I looked at it five, six, seven times, something like that, five or six, seven times those last couple drives that we didn't put it, produce anything that were either reads or to him, you know. And so, um, you know, he did a great job, though, man. When he got the ball, he uh, – um, obviously had his yardage was, was really, really good and productive. And, and, uh, and then at the very end, you know, we had to get something, try to get something going in the passing game, had some third down situations that we had to get the ball down the field that we just didn't execute, you know? Um, so, yeah. Have you had a chance to talk to Antonio since uh, Saturday? I'm sure you have it, but Dabo said after he took the loss pretty hard, but at the end, when I got out 10 and two without him, he's been such a vital part of this offense. What has he said? Yeah, I haven't talked to him other than I saw him briefly, uh, you know, during the official visit, we had a, an event at Coach Sweeney's house. And so um, we got, I got to see him there and he showed up there smiling, you know, he, he's, he's such a good kid and he'll bounce right back. And uh, heck, like you said, I mean, we wouldn't be 10 and two without, without him and the success that he've, he's had as a, as a freshman. And so uh, these young kids are very resilient people, you know, they, they bounce back a lot of times quicker than, than us adults do, <laughs> you know, us older people do. How long did it take you to bounce back? You were pretty upset after, after the game. Heck yeah, I was upset. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, uh, yesterday was a tough day, you know, I just, you know, swallow that pill, man. It was hard. It was hard. Uh, but, um, but man, it's our job as coaches is to um, understand number one, this is a game that uh, you get to regroup and play the next week. Fortunately for us, we get to play this week. And uh, I know there's a lot of teams that aren't able to play in championship games, but we're able to, hey, put it behind us as quickly as possible and, uh, and show our players that, man, uh, this is a game. And this is a game of football that, you know, Heck, we won seven in a row against those guys, and, and that's hard to do. And, um, you know, just really proud of what we've been able to accomplish, even though it hurt really, really bad on Saturday. And we just got to keep a perspective and uh, understand that, um, 
that uh, that we get another opportunity, and how can we show these guys this this opportunity by by bouncing back quickly and and heck yeah, uh, holding them accountable for the mistakes, holding yourself accountable for mistakes, and learning from it, and then hey, let's get ready, man, because we get to get go play in a championship game. I think just execution, you know, we just missed plays that were there. Um, and, and just uh, whether it would be missed throws or uh, we had a handful of drops that would have continued drives or, or big play drops, um, big play missed throws, like I said. And then, you know, there was a couple of plays, one of them going to the tight end, wide open tight end, and, you know, we had pressure. And the guy tipped it and hit his arm or hit the ball as the ball is going out, you know. And and uh, <clears throat> that's why football is the ultimate team sport. It really is. And <laughs> there's no argument with that. I mean, there's 11 guys doing different jobs on every play, and um, you got to do it together. And it was one of those days where when we had big play opportunities, it was somebody, you know, you know, not making it not making the play that they needed to make. And uh, whether it would be a protection, a throw, a catch, um, you know, and uh, that's where we struggled on Saturday. You mentioned the protections. While there's a lot of focus on DJ and the receivers and the drops, it seemed like the protection kind of had some breakdowns. Yeah, there was a couple times where we got a little pressure a little bit faster than should have happened and, and uh, had to – DJ had to try to make some throws with, with people in his face, and that's part of playing – that's part of playing uh, quarterback, but there were some opportunities that were definitely big opportunities down the field, um, and we just didn't hold up in protection like we have in the past, you know. So there's a couple breakdowns there um, that we need to correct. How did Mitchell Mays do on? He's one of those guys getting some, you know, on-the-job training right now. Yeah, no, he's learning. You know, he's learning. He's done a lot of good things. Um, but he had a couple miscues on Saturday too, you know, a couple pressures that uh, came from his side, but um, just like we're doing, you know, just try to learn from it and and, uh, and move forward because he's a talented player, man. We're so lucky to have him um, and, and, you know, for the most part, has done a really good job. Last two weeks have been uh, kind, of, kind of difficult for him, but he's been thrust into a main spot. He, he really has. So he's learning how to be a starter, learning how to play all those snaps. And, uh, and, and, and that's the key to those situations is you take each game and you – and you try to uh, learn from it and, and, and get better and move forward. Using DJ in the running game would sort of be a delicate situation because he's effective at it, but you're also exposing him to further hits. Is there, is there an ideal number of carries in your mind going to get that you uh, want for him? You know, I, I don't know if there's an exact number um, other than, you know, he's shown that he's very, very uh, uh, versatile as far as a runner. And, um, and he's been able to hold up. He's a big kid. He's got uh, he's a lot of strength, and, um, and and he's run the ball well. And so, um, you know, it really helps you uh, offensively whenever you have a guy that can do that. And so, you know, he's going to continue to run the football. I don't know. I don't have an exact number, but, you know, he's, he's definitely going to continue to run the football. There's no doubt about it. And that keeps him going, too. It helps his confidence and um, gets him into the game a little bit faster, too. Yeah, no, he got hit pretty hard. He had a couple couple hits that um, that definitely can't, got up a little bit slower than normal. Um, and I asked him after that series, you know, and he said he was he was good. He just got hit, I think, on his hip or something or on his thigh. So, um, but was able to bounce back. And and uh, he's a tough kid, you know. So he continued to play. Uh, yeah, it's every Saturday that you call a game. There's going to be a couple plays here or there that you wish you would have either called or uh, had different timing on or, you know, that sort of thing. And and, um, and then, you know, you look back at, you know, how can we execute better? Because in the end, that's what it's all about is execution, you know, or what are some of the things that broke down that we can – we can do a better job of and and uh, really a lot of it comes down to details and just really emphasizing the details of every little part of the game and every position group and uh, and that's our job as, as coaches is to hold those guys accountable for the details and because we know if the details happen then the big things will happen you know and if we can focus on those little things 
um, you know, we'll get the big results. I know you guys were talking about trying to build confidence as an offense. Um, yep. These last few games where there's been some downs, are you at all wondering if, they, if the confidence is waning? Uh, no, I think, I think we gained some confidence against Louisville and gained some confidence against Miami. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, and we just – uh, this this last game was a little bit of a you know a halter as far as some of the things especially in the second half you know we came out I think we had 250 at halftime uh, didn't score as much as we probably needed to in the first half but had 250 yards and um, and so uh, the second half was the biggest the biggest uh, issue there just execution and so um, but I, I I know our kids have confidence there's no question about that. Um, it's just a matter of continuing as coaches to put them in a position to regain that confidence back. Um, that'll be the key this week. Any questions for Coach from Zoom? Yeah. Hey, Coach Scott, Keith Ray Greenville. Uh, Clemson's reputation as wide receiver you has kind of taken a hit in the past couple of years. What, what do you think is the primary culprit there, and what do you think needs to happen to, for Clemson to recapture that standing? Um, you know, that's a great, uh, title to have wide receiver. You, I would, I would say it's QBU. I'd say it's OLU. I'd say there's a lot of positions that could probably say that. Um, and I would just say for this year, you know, I mentioned this before in the past that, that we have guys that we can really spread the ball around in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, obviously we haven't been as productive in the passing game. So that's something that, uh, we can do a better job of um, of finishing on some plays and, and making the plays at quarterback. And, um, you know, there's a variety of reasons maybe for that. But um, but I do think that, <clears throat> you know, our tight end room has been very, very good. And, and uh, we've been able to spread the ball out to those guys and being able to get our running backs in the running game, in the passing game a lot more too has allowed this offense to be able to spread it out more as far as who's getting the ball. Um, so we haven't had maybe that one or two guys that have just had the ton of ton of catches, um, maybe like we have in the past. Um, you know, Antonio has the most catches, obviously, and he's done a really good job. Um, but, you know, just continue to, to get better and continue to uh, grow from, from some of the mistakes or miscues. And, um, but, man, we got some talented guys, and, and we're going to continue to, you know, trust in those guys and continue to uh, give them confidence. Yeah, they had some uh, injuries uh, to some, you know, key guys on their defense. And, um, you know, I know statistically they're not very high, but they've played a lot better these last several games. And, and uh, man, it's going to be a challenge. Um, and uh, they're way better on defense than what their statistics show. Um, and I know that. They run well. They're big up front in the interior. Um uh, their Will linebacker, number 33, I think has the most tackles in the ACC. He moves around very, very well. Um, you know, a couple really good defensive ends, and and uh, and they got some skill. And so, uh, like you said, yeah, they're definitely playing more confidently on defense the last several games. And then a receiver, is there anything you can point to as far as just the inconsistency where guys aren't making some of those plays that they were making earlier in the year, particularly like Wake Forest game? Yeah, you know, um, you know, it's just a matter of trying to put them in the best position possible and, and uh, letting them go play the game, you know. And, and uh, you know, when they make a mistake, just move forward. Um, that's, that's really as simple as it is, is, is uh, trying to help them regain their confidence back and, um, and, uh, and, and moving on is the, is the biggest thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, anytime somebody goes down and doesn't come back in the game, you know, something's up, obviously, injury-wise. And so um, they've had to shuffle some guys around and, and have had to uh, play some younger players um, that came in and stepped up and got some experience. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely well aware of that. Anybody else for Coach? Is there any particular reason that Davis wasn't targeted as often as he has been? Um, 
No. I mean, like I said, there was a handful of plays that were targeted to the tight ends that didn't work out to go to the tight end. But, uh, but no, we got we to gotta give him the ball more for sure because he's a talented player. You know, um, you know, EJ's done a really good job for the most part. Just inconsistency, I think. Um, and, and as we all know, that's hard. You know, that's hard to be a very, very consistent player um, all the time. And, and uh, I just think the biggest thing for him, like I said, is just being more consistent as a, as a football player. Anybody else? All right, thank you. All right, thank you all.